we're looking at the cardiac cycle. This is the second video in the series and we're digging into phase two, isovolumetric contraction. Now let's set the stage. The blood has come back from the rest of the body and we're trying to take that blood and pump it back out. Now, in the first phase of the cardiac cycle, the atria contracted, and that pushed the last bit of blood into the ventricles. For a review of that, check out the previous video on atrial systole, aka atrial contraction. It's now time to take that blood and pump it back out to the body. The right ventricle is getting ready to pump the deoxygenated blood to the lungs so that it can pick up some oxygen. And the left ventricle is getting ready to pump that newly oxygenated blood that just just came back from the lungs out to the rest of the body. And this next phase is called isovolumetric contraction, or more specifically, isovolumetric ventricular contraction. Let's break down that term. We know what contraction is. That has to do with muscles. The muscles will actually make themselves shorter and tighter, and that's contraction. With the heart, that basically squeezes the heart to pump the blood out. Now, the term ventricular lets us know that we're talking about the ventricles. And the term isovolumetric is made up of two parts. We have the iso part, meaning the same, and volumetric referring to the volume, and in this case, the volume of blood. So when we combine it all, isovolumetric ventricular contraction is the phase of the cardiac cycle where the ventricles contract, but the volume of blood in the ventricles remains the same. How and why does this happen? I'm glad you asked. First, let's look at the EKG. We looked at the P wave in the last video and how that led to the atria contracting. The next thing we see is the QRS complex. The QRS complex shows the depolarization of the ventricles. Let's look at this more closely. The signal signal for the ventricles to contract starts in a structure called the AV node or the atrioventricular node. Once that signal comes from the AV node, it spreads via these bundle fibers and also the Purkinje fibers all throughout the ventricles. And the cool thing about the cells that make up the muscle of the ventricles is that they're all electrically connected. So if one gets depolarized, that depolarization is gonna spread to the entire structure. And as the ventricles depolarize, that's shown on the EKG as the QRS complex. As you can see, it's much larger than the P wave, and that's because the ventricles are larger than the atria, so the signal is also gonna be significantly stronger stronger. And once the ventricles depolarize, now we have the signal that we need for the ventricles to contract. Now, what happens next is a key concept to understand during this phase. If we look at the ventricular volume, we can see that it stays constant during this phase. And there's an important reason for that. When the ventricles start to contract, that's going to close the valves. Let's just look at the left side. The left atrioventricular valve that's between the left atrium and the left ventricle, that's going to close. And the aortic valve also gets shut. That's the valve between the left ventricle and the aorta. And the aorta is the very large main artery that takes the blood to the rest of the body. You might also see this valve in some textbooks called the mitral valve or the aortic semilunar valve. It's all the same thing. So these two valves are both closed. As a result, for a relatively short period of time, we have a sealed container that's contracting. What's that gonna do to the pressure? Well, of course, that's gonna increase the pressure significantly, and that's exactly what we see. Now, that's only gonna go up to a certain point, and why that is just makes sense. Let me explain. We know that the blood from the left ventricle is gonna go to the aorta to go to the rest of the body. And the aortic valve is between the two structures. But there's a certain amount of pressure in the aorta already because there's blood in there already. And you can see that it's right around 80 millimeters of mercury. So if you have pressure on one side of that valve that's at 80 millimeters of mercury that's inside the aorta and pressure on the other side that's increasing rapidly, well, the valve in between will stay closed until you pass that 80 millimeters of mercury. It's like if you have someone pushing on one side of a door and someone pushing on the other side, once you get more force on one side than the other, what's gonna happen? The door is gonna open. So. At that point, the aortic valve will finally open and the blood can be sent into the aorta so that it can go to the rest of the body. 
That's when the isovolumetric contraction phase will come to an end and we move on to the next phase. Now, there are two more things that you need to know about this stage. We already know that when the ventricles contract, the valves are going to close. But there's something that happens to the atrial pressure during this stage. You'll notice this little bump in the atrial pressure. That little bump is called the C wave. What causes this? Well, as the atrioventricular valve closes, it kind of bulges back into the atria because of the pressure increase in the ventricles. Picture the atrioventricular valves like this. And as the ventricles contract, they don't just close like this. Imagine them being pushed by the increased pressure and closing like this. So there's a little bit of bulging into the atria and that causes this bump in pressure that we see in the atria. And lastly, when the atrioventricular valves close, it's not a quiet event. It makes a sound. In fact, that's when we get the first heart sound. You know, we have that lub dub lub dub sound when the heart beats well the lub of that lub dub that's the sound of the atrioventricular valves slamming shut okay maybe slamming is a bit much but you get the point and that is isovolumetric contraction now to get my free copy of my detailed guide of the cardiac cycle check out the link in the description and it'll walk you through the entire cardiac cycle in a way that's easy to understand and in the next video we're going to dive into the next phase ejection i'll see you over there peace